And then there was Monday Night Raw for Monday, September 24, 2018. Just a couple of weeks away from the big Super Showdown special event. So clearly WWE is bringing us three plus hours of memorable entertainment tonight, right? WWE is going to come to excite us, get us full of intrigue, suspense, and drama on tonight's three plus hour show of Raw. So how do they plan on doing that? You ask? Sit down, guys. You don't want to be standing for this one because the entertainment is coming fast and furious. The entertainment that WWE is giving us is off the fucking charts. Are you ready for this? They plan on giving us exciting three plus hours of action tonight by giving us... Are you ready? By giving us... The same nonsensical bullshit, trash, and garbage that we've been fed the last 10 plus years. Tonight, because they've already started to issue matches left and right for tonight's card to get us excited. So they're already releasing their matches. This is supposed to interest us, get us full of that intrigue, get us excited for tonight's Raw. You ready for this? Can't make this up. How about Ruby Riot versus Bree? Bella! Nobody got excited for that. At all. Nobody even lifted their head up from their phone. Let me say this again. Ruby Riot taking on Bree Bella! No one? No one's excited? Bueller? Bueller? I don't blame you. Neither am I. Because it's the same nonsensical bullshit we see every fucking week with the riots. When the riot squad enters a feud... I, I, I honestly want to put my head through a concrete wall because I know for the next six months, this is what we're seeing. We saw it with Bailey and Sasha. Now we're starting to see it a week ago, two weeks ago with Riot Squad and the Bella Twins. And now, I'm telling you right now, it's going to happen. Brie Bella versus Ruby Riot. The Riot Squad will interfere. Nikki Bella will come out to help out Brie. Then Ronda Rousey will come to help out the Bella Twins. And we have a six-person schmoz. And then next week on Raw, we're going to get the same six women in another type of a schmoz. Maybe it's Nikki Bella versus Ruby Riot again. Maybe it's Ruby Riot and fucking another Riot Squad member taking on the Bella Twins. But either way, you're going to get the same participants in the ring next week. And there's going to be the run-ins, the interference, the schmoz. And then Saturday, October 6th for the Super Showdown, we're going to get all six women in the ring again, but this time it'll be the actual three-on-three -three match. That's how they build storylines and feuds now, and then they wonder why we don't give a fuck. Because that's not how you build a storyline in a feud. Vince says this is what we're going to have at the pay-per-view, and the creative writers, that's right, I use that term really loosely, creative, but the writers are like, all right, Vince, that's the match you want for the next four, five, six weeks? We'll put them all in the ring together and have a schmoz. So by the time the pay-per-view match comes around, nobody cares because we've already seen them beat the fuck out of each other. Throwing these teams in the ring every week in some form or facet, or making it one-on-one, -on -one, separating the teams and making it one-on-one -on -one just so later in the match or at the end of the match... The participants in the team, the other participants, they end up coming out anyway to interfere. It always ends up in the same schmozzery either way. So by the time the pay-per-view match comes around, we don't care because we've seen it a thousand times. I hope this makes sense because if it doesn't, you're dumb as fuck. It is absolutely mind-bogglingly hurtful right now. What WWE gives us on a weekly formatted television show like Monday Night Raw. Something that should be so exciting, so intriguing. We all as fans should be anticipating Monday Night Raw. You're at your shitty fucking job. You're at your shitty school in your shitty class. And you're thinking, what am I doing tonight? I don't even know. It's Monday. I got school tomorrow. I got work tomorrow. I can't really go out and party. I can't do anything. What's on TV? And, oh, Monday Night Raw is tonight. What the fuck? That's awesome. That's exciting. That'll fucking... That's gonna be fun. That's entertainment. That's my type of entertainment. We can't even do that. Now we're just like, oh, Monday Night Raw tonight. Fuck. Yep. All right, well, I guess... I, I mean, I guess, right? I mean, it's, it's wrestling. That's what I love. I guess I'll watch. We shouldn't be doing that shit. Back in the day when I was growing up, man, Monday Night Raw was the place to fucking be. You sat on your fucking couch, on your fucking bed, on the floor, at a friend's, wherever the fuck you were at in the world. 
when Monday Night Raw hit the airwaves, you were glued to that TV from the time it hit the airwaves to the time it went off the air and faded to black. And a bunch of awesome, epic shit happened. And when you went to school the next day, you were talking about it. That was the talk of the school for the entire day. You couldn't wait till next week's Raw. It ain't nothing like that, no matter how old you are. If you're 10 years old, if you're 100 years old, ain't nobody talking about Raw the next day. Not in a good fucking way. We're boggled our fucking brains. We're racking our heads, our skulls, trying to figure out what the fuck Vince is even doing. What happened to this show? They're literally advertising that, guys. This is an advertisement that went out hours ago. Brie Bella versus Ruby Riot is supposed to attract asses to the fucking TV sets. That's what's supposed to try to sell out the Pepsi Arena in Denver, Colorado tonight. Because it is not sold out. Brie fucking Bella. The fucking Bella Twins. Honestly, the Bella Twins. I like the Bella Twins, BC. BC, lay off the Bella Twins, please. I really like them. They started the revolution, BC. Yeah, yeah. They started the revolution just like I founded Google. And I'm the owner of Instagram. That's me. I created it all. I'm a multi-trillionaire. That's right. What do you mean I'm bullshitting you? You just bullshitted me first. You said the Bellas started a revolution. Yeah, the revolution of a diva's Evolution, that's what they started. The Bella Twins started the revolution of the Divas Evolution. That's all they're going to be known for. They are the epitome of Divas. Divas. Not women's wrestlers. Nikki Bella got good. She got some training. She got decent. She had some good matches. That doesn't make her anywhere in the realm of the league of Sasha Banks. In the league of Charlotte. Nowhere near. The Bella Twins are supposed to attract asses to fucking seats. That Brie Bella of all people. That's fucking funny. That's funny shit. If that doesn't sell you, how about Elias versus Bobby Lashley? Because that's also what they're giving us. Bobby Lashley versus Elias. And they're saying this is a culmination of a hard-hitting feud from the last several weeks. Here's some fucking truth for you. I didn't even know they were feuding. That's how horrible Raw has been for the longest time. The last memory that I can remember for Bobby Lashley was him doing a seance with Jinder Mahal in the middle of the ring and Kevin Owens attacked him. And I only remember that because Kevin Owens actually quit the week before, but Vince McMahon ha had one of his fucking chaotic moments where he said, no, I need him back because we all have to be, I need enough cronies for Braun Strowman's heel turn. So they brought back Kevin Owens way before he was supposed to be brought back. One week after he quit. And he attacks Bobby Lashley. That's the only thing I remember from Bobby Lashley in the last fucking month or two. Even with this whole Leo Rush manager shit. I don't even remember him really with Bobby Lashley at any time. I just remember Leo Rush trying to avoid Kevin Owens. And was it Elias? And he was flipping over them and jumping over them. And, and he looked like a Power Ranger. But I don't remember Bobby Lashley in any memorable moment for over a month now. And Elias, the last memorable moment I remember from Elias was him and Trish Stratus up in Canada when Trish Stratus returned. That was it. That's what I remember. Oh, maybe Mick Foley too, right? What was that, a week or two ago? Right before Hell in a Cell. I think Mick Foley came out and interrupted Elias. I don't remember any feud with Bobby Lashley and Elias. I don't. Now I know Bobby Lashley is teaming up with John Cena to take on Elias and Kevin Owens at the Super Showdown. But this feud isn't a feud at all. This is not a storyline. This is just a thrown together match. And now they're trying to make it look like there's a feud. And tonight, one of their marquee matches to get us excited is Bobby Lashley versus Elias. This sounds like the same Typical, redundant matches made by WWE every single Monday night. This sounds like something I would have saw last week, something I would have saw two weeks ago, something I would see every single week. If that doesn't excite you, the tag team championships are on the line. Well, fuck BC, that's exciting, right? Oh yeah, Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler defending against the Revival. Excuse me if there's not goosebumps on my arms. Excuse me if I'm not calling everybody I know and going, you have to tune in to Raw tonight. No, no, no. 
I know you haven't watched in years because the product sucks, but you have to tune in tonight because Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre are taking on The Revival. That's right. What do you mean you're not excited? I just told you Drew and Dolph are taking on The Revival in one of the biggest Raw matches in the history of Raw. Hello? You fuck, did you hang up on me? Hello? Those are the three huge, that's right, huge matches that they're advertising for Denver, Colorado tonight. To get us excited, right? They, they issued all those matches hours ago, by the way. So when you're at school today and you're getting those, uh, those fucking messages by WWE.com or whatever fuck you get your messages, tonight you can't miss Raw. This is happening. And you're at work and you're getting these incoming messages. That's right. Those are the messages coming to your phone. Ruby Riot versus Brie Bella, Elias versus Bob Lashley, Bobby Lashley, and the Revival are going for the tag team championships yet again. When they already had their chance against the fucking B team and could get the job done multiple times, here they go again. Because the tag team scene is a joke. There isn't enough tag teams. And even if there was 20 tag teams, I bet you we would give a shit about zero of them. It's a joke. So it doesn't matter if the Revival loses every single one of their opportunities. Every two to three weeks, the Revival will get another opportunity because they're one of the only tag teams around. What's your other option? The fucking Ascension? They should be back on the Home Depot stock team tonight anyway. They shouldn't even be in the Denver, Colorado Pepsi Arena. They should be back on the overnight team because Home Depot called and they want their workers back. Unload the trucks, Ascension. Victor, go back to your fucking ice cream truck and stop overcharging. Do not quit your daytime jobs, Ascension, because when it comes to pro wrestling, you suck horribly. What else are we building tonight? Tension, they're saying, between Roman and Braun. We saw hell in a cell. And both men, flat on their asses, they couldn't even get up because one guy, Brock Lesnar, beat them up. So now I'm supposed to look at them as the dominant people of Monday Night Raw, the dominant wrestlers. And I'm supposed to care about a war between them lasting through, what is it, October 6th's Super Showdown. Where there, we're just going to get a six-man tag again. This is all just leading to Dolph, Drew, and Braun versus Roman, Seth, and Dean. Six-man tag. That's the big match at Super Showdown. Like I give a fuck! That is a Monday Night Raw match at best. And even then I wouldn't care about that six-man tag. If I'm this fucking amplified right now about a preview, can you imagine how tomorrow's review is gonna go? Guys, if this show, and you'll, you'll know how I'm feeling by my fucking Twitter, at BC Amplified. A lot of you guys are already on that Twitter. Um... You're going to know how I'm feeling about the show. If this show is a train wreck from top to bottom, I'm holding nothing back tomorrow. And I don't care if I offend people. I don't care if you like it. I don't care if, or if you don't like it. I don't care if you think I'm being too mean, if I'm an asshole. I don't care. This company needs to fucking know that Monday Night Raw used to be something special for all of us. You could see the fucking twinkle in the eyes of the performers when they were coming out every Monday down that aisle. They wanted to be there more than anything. In the fans, we were excited. We wanted to be there more than anything. Now it's just going through the motions. The fans are golf clapping. The wrestlers are coming out there and just going through the motions. Just trying to get back to their hotel to make it before room service ends so they can make their next town the next day. Everybody, from the wrestlers to the fans, are just going through the motions. That's not what we enjoy about pro wrestling. And it's got to stop, and it's got to stop now. Every single Raw goes by. We're all getting older and older. The product is getting worse and worse. And nobody's doing a damn thing about it. Well, I am. I might have a fucking heart attack during one of these videos one time, but you know what? I'm going to give you my all to try to change this business. And if one person can hear this video and passes that on to another and another and hundreds become, become thousands and the, the fucking entity known as WWE headquarters, they'll have to listen to people like us because we are the fan base that has been with them from day one. 
We're unwavering in our support. We tune in every Monday out of habit and hope. And when Raw goes off the air normally, we are fucking disgusted and confused. We need to stand up if we want to fix a problem. Something we love so passionately is fucking so redundantly tragic. How is that not... I mean, that is the worst thing I could describe. Something that I love. Redundantly tragic. And again, that's just the preview for tonight's Raw that'll hit the airwaves in a few hours. If it's the train wreck that I'm thinking it's going to be, tomorrow's review right here on this channel, I'm going to explode like never before because I've had enough. This is what they're getting us excited for. When you give away matches hours before your event so the people at school and the people at work can get excited, or the people at home that maybe just have a day off, or maybe they're in a supermarket, or maybe they're on the road, but they're getting the incoming message, tonight's Raw is going to feature... We want to see some epic shit that gets ex ex excited. Sex, 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 I can speak! That gets us excited for actually tuning in later. And when you give us just the redundant bullshit that we've seen so many times before, what is that honestly fucking doing? The same people in the same matches. And it makes me want to put my fucking head through a hundred concrete walls back to 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 back times a hundred. I'm fucking done with this preview. I'll see you guys tomorrow for Monday Night Raw's review in reaction. And I promise you I'm bringing my fucking A game. I hope creative and the pro wrestlers bring their A game tonight for Raw. That's it. Cut this shit. Check you later.